New Vision Christian Center. by Deacon Jackie, Deaconess Jackie Lewis. Then we'll have the Old Testament by Deaconess Harris. The New Testament by Deaconess Eichner. Sinatra there for a minute. Okay, Frank. Okay, praise the Lord. 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 Praise the L
Praise God. We just thank you. Mother, we thank you for just giving us this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank you because this is our first uh, first deacon uh, day. And we just thank you all for supporting us. And uh, I just thank God because I've been here all day. But, you know, it's never enough yes. for me to be in the house yes. of the Lord. Yes. Because I remember I used to be in, go to sleep and we wake up and we're still in the church. But we just kinda, I'm just going to pray because... God has been so good to me. God has been good to me. And he's still blessing me. Bless me every minute, every hour of the day. So, dear, can everyone stand, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for being in the presence of you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your, your awesomeness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us over the highways, whoever came. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for the speaker that's gonna be speaking this evening, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all the auxiliaries that's here tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for just being the God that you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our life, health, and strength. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, New Vision. I am here to read the Old Testament for you, and I'm going to be coming to you from Psalms 113, 1 and 2. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. I'm coming to you with the New Testament uh, reading. It's uh, 2 Timothy 2, 15 and 16. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of, the, of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. We're going to call for our praise and worship team to come forward.
to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all me. I got a great imagination. I ask for a lot. I ask for a lot because I know I'm his princess. And he's going to take care of me. Amen.
worship songs, amen. He's able, because I can tell you what, when there were times that I couldn't see my way out. And this week, I was my body was wrecked with so much pain, I had to come home from work early, and I didn't enjoy my job. But I was hurting so bad. And I said, I told my principal, I said, listen, I gotta go home. I'm in pain. I got home and I laid under my weighted blanket and things got better. And then the next morning, I had to take another half a day off. And my family was concerned about me because I don't usually get that sick. But my fibromyalgia has just been out of control. And I was hurting so bad. And there's nothing that can be done about it. But I just kept saying, God, you gotta help me through this one because I'm hurting. And he's able, he, did, he just allowed me to go back to work that afternoon and finish up the week. Let us stand for our pastor, Superintendent William Ephraim. Amen. We thank God for him. We're going to be celebrating 51 years of pastorialship with him. And our other ministers coming forward. But I just want to let you all know that God is able. God is able. And he keeps proving himself every day to me. And even if it's not for a blessing for me, it's for a blessing for people who are connected to me. And because of that, I'm just grateful. I've seen him make something out of nothing. He brought back my college babies, safe and sound. Amen. He brought back my god sisters and I. He brought back my baby, Jade. Safe and sound. He played his scrimmage game and was an injury. We just thank God for keeping his body and bringing them across the highways. And I can tell you all, I just love that song. That's my jam. He's able, he's able, he's able, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of all, oh, oh. We can ever think. I'm a visionary, so I'm thinking all the time. I see stuff before it happens, and he's above all that. And he's able. I just thank God for being able and being
Never misspell the word, God. Blame it on me. Yeah. 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 Sure yeah. yeah. God bless everybody, and you are officially welcome to the deacons and deaconess first annual. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's give the Lord some praise because he's worthy of it. Amen. Of all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. Amen. We count it a joy and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord among the people of God. Amen. We just want to say as we always do, hello, family. to lift up the matchless name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know him as a savior. Yeah. I know him as a redeemer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know him as a way maker. Yeah. I know him as a promise keeper. Yes, he is. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's everything that I need. Why well, this rose to encourage? Amen. I think it says on there the deaconess. Amen. So thankful. Amen. To encourage you. And I thought about it how the women of God, can I, can I okay, men, hold your horses. I, I just want to, <laughs> women of God, we just know naturally. God put something in us to know how to serve, to know how to nurture, to know how to put in place, to know how to do things, to know how to start them. To know how to complete them, see them through, yeah. don't he? Yeah. Amen. He's put some wonderful things in our hands. And I thought about how Mary and Martha yeah. and the women of God, deaconess, you've learned from that story. But not only we know how to serve and be busy, amen, but we know how to find time at Jesus' feet. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. We will serve him and sit before him. Amen. To do his will. I thought about in Acts, the sixth chapter. Amen. When it talked about the apostles wanted them to choose out seven men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. I thought, and it says to appoint over this business of the widows being taken care of. But just can you let me just kind of use my imagination? I believe the women were already working in the background. I believe they were already going to the food pantry. <laughs> Making the house visits. Amen. But the apostles saw that the need was growing and they said, let us pick out some men, deacons, amen, to be over this business. But so thankful for the women of God. Amen. That have put themselves before God for the service of God to do his will. Amen. And be faithful to that. Can I encourage you, women of God, deaconess? Don't look for your rewards down here. Men can disappoint you. But God that sees, <laughs> God that sees from heaven will reward you openly. There's no blessing like he can give you. So stay in the will and the service of God. There was a songwriter said, a, to, a charge to keep I have yes. and a God to glorify. Glory, yeah. So stay in the service of the Lord. Whatever you find your hands to do, God blesses us. Yes. When we put our mind and our thoughts to it, when we put our hands to it, don't God bless it. Yes. God calls it to prosper yes. and yes. to be successful yes. unto him. So just be encouraged, women of God. Keep on serving. Doing the work of the Lord. I know sometimes it might not seem like you get your thank yous. But remember, your God in heaven sees the work. And he will reward you greatly. God bless you. I'm the God to Angela's house. Super tuned to attend the Ephraim to uh, Elder Grace to those other ministers on the roster. And I was looking at the theme. It says 1 Timothy 3 
8 through 13, and it said the qualifications of a deacon. And if I had to give um, some words of expression, and I, I look at it, it says, likewise, uh, must, the uh, must the deacon be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy euchre, but holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Them, then let them use the office of the deacon, being found blameless. And if you understand what the qualification of the deacon, the deacon is supposed to be able to uh, be a servant to the pastor. And I, if I could have to say anything, make sure you're, that your elect and calling is sure. Because we have to be remnants and go out into the dying world and let dying men and women, boys and girls, know that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. We got to give the great commission. He said, go ye therefore, deacons, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to what? Observe all things. And what have I commanded you along with you always, even to the end? Be real. We're living in real times. And we need to have real servants because we serve a real God. And it, I, I just want you to know the qualifications of a deacon. We have to be faithful. And we have to serve like never before. Because, like I said, we're living in a world that's messed up. Uh, we just came out of a pandemic. God is blessing and God is keeping us. But deacons, let your light so shine before men. That they might see his good works. And that he might be glorified. Just give you words of expression. And, that's, um, and then make sure that your heart is in it. Make sure your heart is in it. It's just not here. Amen. But it's out there. It's in the nursing homes. Yes. It's in the jailhouse. Yes. It's in our schools. Yes. And we have to be that light and that beacon. Stand up yes. and make sure that your qualifications are sure and that your neck is sure. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm very, God bless all of you. I'm very happy to be able to be here with you. My son, Assistant Pastor Ephraim, just came out of surgery. But he was at church, and his son-in-law was so concerned about him, he called me and said, can't nobody stop him from coming to church. Maybe if I talked to him, I could stop him. I told him, don't come. I can tell he's not up to par. I don't want him to fall out. God don't intend for you to do that to yourself. Amen? Uh, and so that's why he's not here. He would have been here even though he was sick. Uh, my granddaughter, Chantel, as I was leaving for church this morning, they was taking her to the hospital. And they've kept her. That's where she's at. She's at the hospital with the UC Health out on, um, and not Boulder, she's out on the, the other one, Brygate and Union. And Michelle is on Boulder, Michelle Lee for a minute. She's in the hospital in rehab, in on uh, Boulder in rehab. Mother Severs is preparing for surgery on the 24th. 21st. Amen? Amen? So, sickness is everywhere. And some people are not, see, you're not sick when you need, when your bones are broken. You're injured. Amen? Everybody not, but some people are injured. Then I have that group that have the mental problem. Sister uh, Harris just got back from having surgery on both of her eyes. But well, she's here tonight, this evening. Amen? All right. So I'm, in, I'm with the walking wounded. Everybody wounded but me. I'll run around the church, but I'd probably fall out after the first circle. 
good to see Deacon and Sister Minister Magonia. God's good, isn't he? While we were in our office, Missionary Grace, I was talking to these young men and I looked up on the wall and saw District Missionary Grace on my wall. And I told them that when he was a little boy going around beating up people, his mom was my district missionary. What a wonderful thing to be with you all this evening. I, I can't help Sister Gonzalez but talk about how blessed I am. I am so... I, can, I, can I just give you all... I, I got to tell God thank you. You know, I, I don't... I, I preached this morning, but, but I really... I want to tell you all, I know I'm blessed. That's my sister back there sitting. Some of y'all have never met her. And uh, she's here to help me with Chantel. She's in the black and white. And she's the age of my youngest child. So my mother had her in, in her old age. Here I stand. I went to Mother Burrell's home going. Thursday. She's 101. My friend for ever since I've been in Colorado went to Pastor Emerson's Saturday. Wasn't it Saturday? And he just turned 70. Beautiful wife, children, money, everything. And I'm still here. I'm telling you if you bless, you ought to tell somebody. That's right. You did the right thing. Think about it for a moment before I put this preacher up. Where you were 15 years ago. See, the, the deacons have such a tremendous job. I told them this morning, the only reason they don't run this church totally is because it's so hard. It takes somebody like me. So see, I'm, I'm what they call a battlefield captain. You send me where nobody else will go. If the building, I told my pastor, back to Dr. Bryant, when he bought the church down here, me and Brother Bradford went to the bank and borrowed the money, not knowing what he wanted to do with it. And when he took the money and came down and bought that old raggedy building, and I saw what it was, me and him, I was close to my past. I could dis discuss anything with him privately, but I dare anybody to stand against my pastor publicly. That's right. No, you don't do that while I'm around. I said, Pastor, is this what you want to do this money? I said, if we didn't know that what you was going to do with it, I don't know if we went to the bank that long. And that Sunday, we came up and, and, and Mother Peace, and they were so happy to have that building. It was dancing and praising God. He said, did you see that? She said, that's what I did. You got to look all the church. I'm getting, I'm getting emotional. Because I was blessed. Yeah, the greatest passion ever. Thank you. He didn't let me just do anything I wanted. Sit down over there. That's so all I tell you to get up. So I did what he said. And one day, the church, Mother Bryant's missionary Bryant's mother died. Or some tragedy happened. And all the pit pulpit was full. We built a church and everything. 
and I was still sitting out on the bench. He had never allowed me to come to the pulpit except to clean it up. And he said, Deacon Ephraim, no, he called me Minister Ephraim. He never called me Minister before. He said, Minister Ephraim, come to the pulpit. And I looked around behind me. I thought somebody, some a brother or somebody was there. He said, no, you, you come up. And I got up. I thought he wanted me to enter the trap. It was maybe something was wrong up there, you know. And I came up, and he said, you see this man right here? He said, no matter what he, I've said to him, no matter what I told him to do, he did it. He said, now I got to leave. And he had Elder Williams and all them guys was in the pulpits, but I'm leaving him over the church because I can trust him. So he called me from the deacon board physically to the pulpit, although I have been called to preach for several months. That's why I tell preachers, don't get in a big, just let God. That's true. Now this young man I've known since he was a young boy, a boy, teenager. Watched him grow. And I watched this man work 12 years. Am I right about it? I know who he is. I know who his wife is. I know brother and sister Dalton. I know who they are. You have one of the most powerful connections in the state of Colorado to build a church. If your health will let you do it, you're getting ready to. His mother was my district missionary. First, she was she was missionary in the church, then she became district missionary, served night and day, gave her heart, gave all her money gave our health that's who this man is and he gave 12 years of his life without any kind of accolades with just whatever bishop wanted so when he get up here to preach you you got somebody coming to talk to you about the Lord I say this as I get ready to sit down don't worry about what you're going to get what God has for you <laughs> Sister Whitney What God has for you Is for you What God has for you Ah yes uh -huh. What God has for you Is already yours would you rest on your feet? Ask the pastor from Blessed Church of God in Denver, Colorado, comes before you, Reverend Frank Grace. Say amen for him. Come on, put those hands together. Let's give God some praise. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Put it, put it together. Has God been good to you? I said, has he been good to you? And you ought to praise him. You ought to magnify him. You ought to give him some praise to magnify him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let us pray. Father, we do thank you. We appreciate you tonight. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we could be to ourselves. And Father, we appreciate you tonight. Father, we ask, Lord God, that your anointing, Lord God, would fall upon this life right now. This vessel, God. Use me for your glory, for your honor. God, I'm nothing without you. Can't do nothing with I can't preach, God, unless you preach, God. 
in the name of Jesus. Have your way tonight and move by your spirit in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you. We exalt you and we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Certainly we honor the Lord tonight. We appreciate God for his goodness and his mercy, his long suffering. Amen. We honor this great man of God tonight. Amen. Superintendent William Eaton, one of the greatest prolific preachers. Amen. Praise God in this nation. Amen. You don't really realize what you got. Amen. Until you've been with him a while. Amen. We can be in the back. Amen. And he can drop so many nuggets. Amen. You got to catch him fast. Amen. But we appreciate God for him. Amen. On tonight. Amen. I accept this assignment tonight to preach the gospel. Uh, God called me to preach. Yeah. And so I got to do what God called me to do. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Our theme tonight is the qualifications of deacons. Coming from 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13. 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13. But if you don't mind, and I hope you don't mind, I'm just going to preach what God gave you tonight. Is that all right? Yeah. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of St. Luke. Book of St. Luke, the 17th chapter, 7 through 10. It's the book of St. Luke. The 17th chapter, 7 through 10. And I'm going to read these passages of scripture for you. Uh, but I'm going to read it in the living, the new living translation. Translation. Is that all right? Yeah. And it reads like this. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of the sheep. Does his master say, come in and eat with me? He says, prepare my meal. Uh, put on your apron and serve me while I eat. Then you can eat later. Does the master thank the servant for doing what he was told to do? Of course not. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say, we are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. What I'd like to use for a thought tonight, if the Lord would permit, <laughs> put on the apron. Did you hear what I said? Put on the apron. Let, let me put the apron on. Oh, hold on. Oh, I see. Just, just allow me a minute or two. And let me put on the apron. Mm. Put on the apron. Hallelujah. Brother, if you don't mind, just tying the apron in the back here. <laughs> put on the apron. My goodness. I can do that. <laughs> sir. Thank you. Put on the apron. This is my apron. You see what it said? I could have, I could have got a white one, you know, but this is my favorite. But put on 
the apron. I want to talk uh, tonight about the common duties of the deacon. All right. But I want to use my subject, put on the apron. In the selected passages of our text, Jesus tells a story of a master and his servant. Inferred from the story is the fact that the master sent a servant to plow the field uh -huh, and tend to the sheep. As we eavesdrop on the story by permission of scripture, the servant is returning from plowing the fields and caring for the sheep when he is commanded by his master to put on an apron mm -hmm. ah, and serve him a meal. Yes, now an apron is a protective garment right. that is generally used by individuals who render servant. Right. Mm -hmm. Such as a cook or a waiter, a waitress, doctors and nurses, ah, homemakers, blacksmiths, Barbers and beauticians, carpenters, domestic workers, and so on. It may be called other things like a, a smock, a bib, a pinfall. But nevertheless, no matter the name, uh, the design, or the shape of an apron, it is a symbol of servanthood. And service. In the story, ah, the servant has worked, but he's not invited to sit down and eat. Uh, instead, he is instructed to uh, put on an apron and continue to work. The master does not even thank the servant ah, for all he has done. Ah, and we are afforded. The reason why he does not, because Jesus says the servant was simply doing his job. All right. In other words, uh, it was his duty as a servant to serve. In other words, it was his duty as a servant to uh, be obedient to his master. God help me to preach this gospel. No thanks were required. A servant serves. Uh, we are here today to celebrate the deacons. And the deacon department men and women who are consecrated into ministry. I came today with a message to prepare that is prepared for preachers and deacons. But I want to speak tonight without favoring one above the other. Yeah. Nor neglecting one for the other. Mm -hmm. So as I ask God to give me a word for such an occasion as this. Ah, and the word centers on the common duties of both ministers and deacons. All right. As well. As the universal duty of every follower of Jesus Christ. This duty is the duty to serve. Uh, in fact, the name deacon described here uh, is the obligation. It is interpreted in our English language from the same Greek word, diakonos, which means one who carries out the command of another. You pray with me. I'm going to preach this gospel. Uh, in the Greek, it is translated servant. There is no variation in definition. Yes, the functions of uh, or the responsibilities may differ, but the calling is the same. Yes, sir. Both are called to serve. Both are called to assist. Both, amen, are called to provide. Yes, sir. Mm, both are called to work. A deacon is appointed to uh, relieve the pastor. Of the table issues of the church. Yes. Come on. Ah, by 
table issues, I mean uh, those things that impend on the pastor's timely duties. His study, his meditation, his sermon preparation, and his prayer. By table issue, I mean the natural managerial affairs of the congregation that can occupy too much uh, of the pastor's thoughts and energy. Depleting the pastor of physical strength, peace of mind, sound health, and precious moments with God. Deacons are not appointed to bring more stress, strain on the pastor. But they are appointed to buffer the pastor from the effects of anything that drains the pastor spiritually. In fact, the reason the office was established uh, by the early church was uh, to free up the apostles uh, for the spiritual functions of their assignment by Christ. These first deacons were chosen from among the church to serve the members of the church. It was no prominent position. They were appointed to fill. They were uh, appointed to serve, to make sure that the carnal needs of the congregation were being met, especially those of the widows. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. In the church then, as well as in the church now, deacons wear an apron. Yeah. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. They are house servants. Yes, men and women who are dedicated, who have dedicated themselves to making sure that the house is in order. Yes, and that the house stays in order. Right. If needed, a deacon will be a janitor. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. If the need permits, the deacon will be a bus driver. All right. That's right. Uh, he will shop for groceries. Uh, he'll, uh, God forbid if you have to, but he'll mediate a church fight. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. Facilitate the church program. Whatever requires of him to do to maintain the stability and sovereignty of his church. There are some spiritual requirements of the deacon. He should not, or he should rather, be worthy of respect, have a good reputation, uh, full of the Holy Ghost. You know, some folk like to say spirit, but I, you know, I'm a Holy Ghost man. Yeah. We, we need more than the spirit, we need the Holy Ghost. And wisdom, a man of integrity, not given to uh, much wine, not greedy for money, a Bible student, a praying man or woman, a family man, uh, a one wife man. Can I say that again? You only got one wife. Yeah. Right. You know, you got to make it clear these days. Yeah. You're right about it. <laughs> you know, some deacons think that they play a play. You know, I'm playing. No, the devil is alive. Yes. Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> Act to teach. Right. A good steward of his own household. Yes. Yes, deacons cannot be drunks, thieves, deceitful individuals. Yeah, I said it. Players and womanizers. Yeah. Yes. My God. Wife beaters. Oh, you put your hand on them. Yeah. Ignorant of God's word. Yeah. Unwilling to pray. Unwilling to study. Unwilling to give. Yes, sir. Unwilling to guard for his faith. Yeah. My God. And unwilling to serve. Yeah. He cannot serve. Cannot be a deacon. He who will not serve is disqualified yes. from consideration. Yes, sir. 
Service is the expectation from a deacon. Servanthood is the portrait of a deacon. Am I preaching? The deacon must also be a student of God's word. Have a prayer closet. Be dedicated to his or her church. Be a giver. Uh, a compassionate person. Somebody who is willing to get his hands dirty. Uh, somebody who loves people. Somebody who loves their pastor. The church does not need deacons who attempt to uh, frustrate the vision of the pastor. Scheme against the pastor. Uh, who will not listen to or work with the pastor. The church needs deacons who are willing to submit to leadership. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. We always talking to the women and telling the women they need to submit to their husbands. Uh, we need to submit to our pastors. Come on and say amen. And to leadership. Uh, yes, yes, and willing to submit to guidance. Willing to submit to instructions and willing to submit to correction. Jesus says, to whom much is given. Come on here, somebody. Much is required. There's a greater responsibility on the minister and deacons. With this greater responsibility comes greater accountability to us. God has entrusted the treasures and mysteries of his word as well as ah, the destiny of souls. And as pastors, we cannot allow who assist us to share the wrong message and project the wrong image. The right message is Jesus. I said the right message is Jesus. Uh, and the right image is servanthood. Yeah. I tell you, I feel this thing. Yes, sir. As deacons and ministers, we cannot be ignorant, uh, untouchable, pretentious, or unprepared. I didn't say unlikable because as you stand in the shoes of Jesus, there will always be somebody. Who won't like him. Yeah. Don't be naive or misled. Jesus told his own twelve. That you will be hated because of your commitment to me. Yeah. He said, I send you out as sheep among wolves. Yeah. Ah, deacons don't go in the ministry thinking that. Ah, people will always love you. Even some who cheer you on today may turn their backs on you in a few days later. Ah, if people did this thing to Jesus, people will do this thing to you. Ah, we don't do ministry to uh, be popular. We don't do ministry to get rich. We don't do ministry to serve to gain the praise of people. We do ministry to serve to exalt uh, 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 ourselves above people. We do ministry rather to exemplify Jesus. We do ministry to uphold the agenda of heaven. We do ministry to help hurting Humanity. As deacons, we have charge to keep and a God to glorify. 
As deacons, we must serve uh, this present age. Our calling to fulfill and, and, and with all our powers engaged, we must do our master's will. Yeah. Yes. When we sign on to be deacons and ministers, uh, the service is not optional. All right. When you sign up, it is no longer about, uh, about us. It's service. Yeah. 24-7. All right. It's service. You're right. Any day or any hour. Yeah. It's service. Yeah. When God needs you. Yes, sir. It's service. Mm -hmm. When the pastor needs you. Yes. It's service. In the hospital. Yeah. It's service. Yeah. Driving the bus. Right. Yeah. It's service. Yes. Running a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. I heard superintendent talking about uh, uh, Bishop Bryant calling him to the pulpit. And he thought that when he called him to the pulpit, it was to amen, clean something up or take something away. That's service. Yes. Because it's in your heart. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Ah, it has no day off to both the minister ah, and the deacon. Ah, yes, and people uh, and you, you rather you 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 do people uh, 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 rather, and people may not rather appreciate what you do. People may not understand why you do what you do, but you do it for the kingdom, yeah, uh, and for your church, and for your pastor. Put on the apron. Tell the story. Put on the apron. Denounce sin. Put on the apron. Highlight Calvary. Help me out here, brother. Put on the apron. And preach Christ. Put on the apron. And walk in humility. Put on the apron. Ah, and walk in love. Put on the apron and walk in integrity. Put on the apron and walk in your duty to serve. Serve unto your service. Your service is completed. Serve until heaven. Heaven gets the news. Serve until the church is being edified. Serve until you breathe your last breath. Say yes. I stopped by to tell you tonight. It's time to serve. I stopped by to tell you tonight to put on your apron and do the work of the Lord. Say yes. It's not about a badge. It's not about a color. It's not about a title. But we serve because it's our duty. We serve because we've been called to do the will of God. Say yes. Say yes. I came to serve. I came to do the will of him that sent me. Say yes. What are you saying, brother preacher? Put on your apron and don't take it off. Put on your apron and do the will of God. Put on your apron. Say yes. 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 Servant. It's about serving. We serve to fulfill our own. We serve to satisfy God. We serve to hear Jesus say, Servant, well done. Service 
is a privilege. Serving should be a pleasure. Serving should be an honor. Serving is a way of Christ. He came to serve. He came to minister. Say yes. He came to help. Say yes. Jesus denied himself in serving. Jesus sacrificed himself in serving. Jesus put others before him. Say yes. Jesus made the Father happy. My God. My God. Make God happy and keep the apron on. Make God happy. Do what a servant does. Make God happy. Say yes. And let this mind be in you. That which was also in Christ Jesus. Don't ever take it off. Keep it on. Say yes. Say yes. Serve with all you got. Serve with all your heart. Serve with all your mind. fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You finished the course. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. That's what I want to hear him say. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. And I'm going to make you a ruler. A ruler. A ruler. Say yes, say yes, say yes, I am a servant. Stay in the fight. Stand by the man of God. Don't stress him out. But help him out. Yes. I said don't stress him out. But help him out. Thank you, brother. Brother Stephen, you helped me real good tonight. I appreciate you, man. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Wow. Well, I hope I said something tonight. To encourage you. I got my apron on. It says King of the Grill. That means I don't have no problem, Superintendent. Going out and standing behind the hot grill. Yeah. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. Yeah. Cooking some ribs. And yes, sir. Some beans. Yes, sir. And some greens and maters and taters and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. To help sell some dinners. Come on here, somebody, to build the church. Yeah. Come on, say amen, somebody. Yeah. I ain't got I gotta keep my apron on. Yeah. It may get dirty. Yeah. But one thing about it. I know somebody that can clean it up. His name is Jesus. I know somebody that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask or think. So when the apron gets dirty, all I got to do is give me a little time 
Oh, come on, say amen. Say amen. And I can throw it in the washing machine and wash it up and take it out and dry it up. But I can always put the apron right back on. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Everyone, God bless you. Amen.